Hi everyone! It is time to look at a few more motherboards that will follow the upcoming Older Lake processors. And right here I have three different models from Gigabyte, including the board that should be one of the cheapest Z690 motherboards on the market. This one right here. Now unfortunately Intel's NDA is still in place, which means that I cannot really talk about how these new processors nor how these new motherboards actually perform until November the 4th. So yet again I'm just going to go over some of the features that these boards have to offer, uh, figure out what makes them good, what are they missing and just what you should know in general before going and buying one of these. Also, we finally have some information about the pricing here, so that will help to make a bit of a better comparison as well. So let's begin. This video is brought to you by Seasonic and their Prime Series power supplies. These top quality power supplies are very efficient, they're whisper quiet, extremely reliable and my go-to choice for most of my test rigs and builds around here. And to make the deal even sweeter, Seasonic wraps it all up in a cozy 12 year long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. So I'm going to start with the most basic board of the three, which is the Gigabyte Z690 UD, which Gigabyte is actually marketing as the best value Z690 on the market. And looking at the pre-order prices on Newegg, this motherboard should cost you around $200, which is definitely on the low end of all Z690 boards, or at least for now. So do keep in mind that these are early pre-order prices and that they will change over time. Since support for DDR5 is one of the biggest new features of Older Lake CPUs and DDR5 will probably be very expensive to begin with, it totally makes sense that Gigabyte will be selling these cheaper UD boards in both DDR5 and DDR4 variants and either with or without Wi-Fi depending on what you need and what you want to pay for them. I have the DDR5 Wi-Fi version here and it actually looks pretty bulky for an affordable ATX board. It comes with sizable heat sinks on the VRMs and it has a proper I.O. cover, which is something you won't find on most boards in this price range. As far as features go, this board is pretty okay too. You get three M.2 slots for Gen 4 SSDs, although only one has a heatsink included. You get six fan headers, two RGB and two addressable RGB headers, and there's both a USB 3.0 and a 10 gigabit Type-C front panel connector. It also includes a little button to flash your BIOS directly, which is something you won't need right now, but it might be relevant by the time the next generation of CPUs comes out. Now, it includes an integrated I.O. shield with a 2.5 gigabit LAN and a total of 10 USB ports, which is actually pretty cool for a budget board. The USB Type-C port is a 20 gigabit USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 port and besides the fact that it has a terribly complicated name, it is great to have it for those super fast external SSDs. Now of course they had to cut some corners here and there to save some costs, so the integrated I.O. shield isn't as nice as the more expensive models, which doesn't really matter. Now the PCB isn't completely black, but it has a lot of dark brown details, which doesn't really fit most systems out there, but again, you won't be able to see it that much. And there's no RGB, as you would guess. They also used a cheap AOC897 chip for audio, which isn't an issue if you end up using a USB or a wireless headset, but it can make a difference if you need a high quality analog audio out. Now, while the first PCIe slot is Gen 5 ready, none of the SSD or other expansion slots are, so while the new CPUs are ready for Gen 5 SSDs, this board will not support them. Also, you shouldn't really expect any real enthusiast features like postcodes or physical buttons on this board either, which kind of comes with this price class. Compared to the ASUS stuff that I talked about in my previous video, this motherboard is a bit simpler and it does drop a point or two in the overall score, but considering it should be something like $70 to $80 cheaper, the difference between the two actually makes complete sense. You should definitely wait for a few reviews next week to see how the VRMs hold up, but with 16 phases with 60 amp power stages for the CPU, I really doubt VRM performance will be a problem. Now the next one in line is the Gigabyte Z690 Aorus Pro, which is their 
mid-range model uh, coming in at around $330 and I do expect similar prices in euros for the people in the EU. Now there should be a DDR4 version for this as well for the people that don't want to update their memory kits just yet but I have the DDR5 version here and just a small reminder uh, that boards will support one or the other. You cannot get a DDR5 version and stick your DDR4 memory in there or buy DDR4 and expect to upgrade to DDR5 when it becomes more affordable. Make sure you buy the right model you need right away. Now we can instantly see that it is positioned above the UD. You don't have the brown PCB anymore and instead you get a board with better heat sinks and a more impressive design overall. You won't get a ton of RGB but that is completely fine with me. Uh, you get four Gen 4 M2 slots for your SSD and they are all covered nicely with a large metal heatsink in the middle which is definitely needed for those high performance models. The audio chip is bumped to a much better quality ALC 4080 which means that you also get an optical out on the IO and next to it you get a total of 13 USB ports including a 20 gigabit type C one again. Now that is a lot of USB ports for any motherboard in any price range so if you need a lot of USB ports this is a very good place to start looking. Uh, there's still a 16 plus 3 phase VRM design but this time with 90 amp power stages for the CPU uh, and again I have doubt that even the more basic Z690 UD design will struggle with anything but if you want a bit of a stronger VRM design this motherboard might suit you better and I believe you will probably appreciate the added postcode as well. But let's see what this motherboard is missing. So if you spend a lot of time working with your motherboard outside of a case, you will miss those uh, full set of physical buttons. But more importantly, the support for Gen 5 SSDs is missing here as well. Now, Gen 5 SSDs aren't coming out until somewhere next year. And even if you look at the current generation of Gen 4 SSDs, it is still sometimes hard to just justify their value. Uh, most users just don't need or won't benefit from that extra speed they have to offer. So on one hand, I do understand not including it, but on the other hand, Considering that most users buy a motherboard to last them a couple of years, it would be nice to have that support. Uh, needless to say that it is backwards compatible, so you could use your Gen 4 or even Gen 3 SSDs to begin with and upgrade to Gen 5 when you want or when you can. So having an option to do something is always better than not. And the last motherboard I have for today is the Gigabyte Z690 Aorus Master and you can instantly see and feel that we are moving up a class here. It is really heavy thanks to the large amounts of metal they put pretty much everywhere. It has a sweet design and it just feels premium on most levels. It has 19 phases with 105 amp power stages for the CPU alone with a set of proper finned heat sinks on top and keep in mind those are not cheap. It has a total of five M2 slots on the board itself, four are Gen 4 and one is Gen 3. It has a total of 10 fan headers, there's a double USB 3.0 header for the cases with four USB 3 ports in the front, and it comes with physical buttons next to the postcode as well as a programmable button which you could just set to boot straight to BIOS for example. On the back you get a total of 11 USB ports, so a bit less than on the Pro, but it is still a decent amount. Wi-Fi is now 6E instead of 6, and you get a 10 gigabit LAN instead of the 2.51 on the Pro. Unfortunately, it doesn't have Thunderbolt support. So the Master is a very cool, very feature-packed board, and it will also cost you around $470 or euros, which is a lot of money. And for anyone that is willing to pay that much for a next-generation board, I do think that the lack of any attention to Gen 5 SSDs is starting to sting. Even if these SSDs aren't really a thing yet, this is one of the biggest feature improvements that this generation has to offer, so it just feels odd not to be ready for them, especially for a product in this class. Now the top slot is Gen 5 ready, so upcoming graphics cards will be completely fine, but the M2 slots are Gen 4, and the two expansion slots on the bottom of the motherboard look like they could be Gen 5 by 16 slots, but they're actually Gen 3 by 4 slots, so they will be useful mostly for sound cards or capture cards or something like that, and that's about it. Having said that, 
If we compare this master board to some of the ASUS boards, for example, there are a lot of things to consider before just dropping it for not having Gen 5 SSD support. So if you compare it to the ROG Strix-E, for example, which should cost about the same and does include support for Gen 5 SSDs, Gigabyte competes with more high-end components. So the VRMs are more expensive, uh, their finned heat sinks are more expensive, you get all the physical buttons for hobby use, the whole board is covered in a ton of metal on both sides and all of the connections are nicely reinforced as well, which is absolutely great for anyone that changes their hardware a lot. And don't forget, you get a 10 gigabit LAN. So all of these things actually cost a lot of money to implement. So in my opinion, this motherboard competes more with the ROG Hero that will cost you a lot more. So. As long as you don't care about next generation SSDs, this board has a lot to offer. And that's it for today for me. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions about any of these boards or about the upcoming CPU launch in general. I already posted a video on seven ASUS boards that you can check out. And as always, don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this one. So bye guys and see you in the next one.